Hi, hope everybody can hear me fine. Uh, thanks for joining this session about the uh, web applications and user interface on the AGL demo platform. Uh, my name is Lorenzo Tilbe. I'm very happy that uh, I'm able to be here again on site uh, after a couple of years only being virtual this event. Um, during the presentation today, I'm going to be uh, just briefly introducing uh, me and my company and the work we have been doing uh, in collaboration with Automotive Grade Linux. And I will be explaining which were like the main motivations for having the AGL web runtime. I will be explaining which is like the technical solution that is being used uh, for providing this functionality based on Chromium and the Web Application Manager or WAM. And, and I will be going a bit more in detail about how to create and debug web applications running on top of, of AGL demo platform. And also following up on what is the current status, uh, ongoing work and, and future plans. Uh, so very briefly about, about me, I am Lorenzo Tilbe. I work for Igalia. Igalia is an open source consultancy uh, which was founded 21 years ago in Galicia, in the northwest of Spain. Uh, we are currently have over 130 employees and we are in 20, 28 countries. We are very distributed all over the world. Um, and our main area of experience is working on web rendering and, and browsers. So we have a lot of very specific technical knowledge on Chromium and WebKit and also WPE and Firefox which are like, like the main open source uh, web engines in the world. We are like the, the second biggest contributor to Chromium and WebKit after Google and Apple. So we are like the biggest uh, independent consultancy working on them for several years already. And we have also teams that complement that work uh, related to work, to compilers, uh, graphics, multimedia and, and stuff. This is a picture from, from our headquarters in, in Spain. Uh, so, Due to that uh, experience working on, on web engines, we were uh, the ones that we could be helping uh, AGL to put in place a web runtime for automotive Linux demo platform. So the, the motivations for doing that is that, okay, uh, besides the initial UI that was available for AGL that was uh, based on Qt, it was important to be able to provide full web platform support into AGL. So what does it mean? That besides having given the capacity to build uh, solutions on top of the rest of the open source stack that uh, AGL demo platform provides, it was important to be able to have like, uh, an eight, the goal was to have an HTML5 only version of the, of the image that you can just rely on web technologies exclusively on standard features. So. Basically, something that was important is that it should be framework agnostic. So different integrators, tier one, might have their own preferred like UI framework. They may be using whatever web solution to develop their own applications. So it was important that it was not connected to any specific front end. So it would, should provide out of the box compatibility with, with all uh, standard web, web APIs. When working on, 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 on the web, like you get like out of the box all the functionalities that are available on web engines, the, meaning from multimedia support, from uh, rendering support. I mean, everything you can have access in the web engine, you are going to have it like that directly integrated there. And portability, of course, people already have their own, their own applications. So it's important for AGL to make them available directly in the web. Something important was also this, that the experience was similar to native-like. This means that we were focusing this on performance, so the, the, the experience interacting with the web version only base of the AGL demo platform should be smooth. I mean, normally when working on web pure cases, uh, like you need to speed things up so the friction when switching applications is uh, small. So this was also some of the goals. To provide integration with other uh, vehicle to cloud services, I mean, Directly by having that using web with uh, a web UI, you, you have that already integrated. And, and, and as I was mentioning, having a, an, an AGL web runtime gives already a huge access to a big community of developers. So 
creating an application and putting it into AGL should be, should be very easy. So, so they can, I mean, it's easier to test applications and run them into AGL. And inter interoperability using any uh, web API that, uh, that can be used. So the solution that was defined for this approach was using uh, 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 an approach based on top of Chromium and WAM. WAM is the, web, the acronym for the Web Application Manager. That is a piece of software that has initially, was initially developed by LG for WebOS. So it's used already on millions of uh, products worldwide for isolating applications that run under uh, WebOS systems. Um, then it was open source as part of the WebOS open source edition. So we took that piece of software that is built on top of Chromium and we adapted that to work into AGL as the scenario was could benefit of using that open source project. I mean, the, the, the goal of having a web runtime is that you can run separate applications into a AGL demo platform. They are using, the, in this case, the Chromium sandboxing model, but they also have additional levels of security because applications should be able to talk to some specific APIs that so others shouldn't. They have integration of life cycle specifically uh, in the case of AGL. So there are many things that were determining that this solution could, could be like beneficial for this ecosystem. Something else we were putting on top of Chromium and, and, and WAM for AGL was we were using the uh, upstream Ozone Wayland backend implementation that we did uh, for upstream Chromium. This was a work sponsored by Renesas. So we were able to have Chromium upstream using Wayland instead of the former X11 implementation, which just making possible to use the, the GPU capabilities of, of more modern hardware uh, embedded hardware platforms. So we were able to speed up the state of the art of GPU acceleration. It was also a solution tested in, in many scenarios and connectivity was provided by this solution. So as, as I was mentioning, specifically one uh, is allowing to uh, optimize memory, optimize application launching time, uh, separate uh, the, the permissions, uh, isolate better the applications. So they, I mean, when, when running on top of a web runtime, you should be able to give the browser all the permissions to have access to all the JavaScript APIs that are exposed. This could be a security problem. So this is something that one fixes uh, and also provides lifecycle control of applications and, and integration. Uh, I will go briefly to explain how to build the AGL demo platform image. So all the documentation about the, the hardware that can be used uh, in the context of AGL is available on the, on the documentation for uh, Needlefish, that is the current mass, uh, stable version. Besides, people can still use Master, or, or, uh, which will become the uh, next uh, Octopus version. So the documentation is there. Uh, different hardware target arch architectures can be used, so people can, use, can build the platform entirely from the scratch uh, using Yocto. Uh, for Renesas boards, for emulation with QEMU, or for Raspberry Pi. So there are like additional documentation there on how to, to use those, uh, those different uh, build targets. And the way to use that is like, okay, just using Depot tools and Yocto is as simple as checking out the Garrett repository from Automotive Great Linux. Uh, uh, download it, configure with the flags that uh, are relevant for building uh, specifically uh, the IBI demo platform HTML5, which is the, the, the web only one that pops up the, the, the web uh, layout, and basically build it with VBAGs. There are also images available. I mean, everything, you can follow the list and all the documentation in the AG Automotive Ready Linux uh, website about more details about building for, for other platforms or and for other uh, targets. Uh, well, the, the code where WAM and Chromium is, uh, or the recipes to build them are using the meta AGL uh, demo, Yocto layer. Um, for those not familiar with building in Yocto, it's basically like a set of uh, recipes for compilation rules to, to in, include in the building of the entire system, the web application manager and Chromium. 
Uh, and they are linking to uh, code that is uh, also everything is public, uh, is upstream, so uh, WAM and Chromium are also uh, in GitHub available from the build recipes in, in Garrett. And then the images, as mentioned, can be directly flashed uh, using, using those commands. By the way, all the, the PDF with this documentation is already uploaded to my presentation session, so you can download it and check the, the details and, and uh, copy like, the, the commands from there uh, if needed. So you, you can uh, generate the image and flash it uh, into an SD card and then boot it in the, into the device directly. Uh, what you would be getting when starting the AGL demo image, uh, you are getting this UI, uh, which has like separate areas, uh, and I can be explaining you a bit more on how the, the HTML interface is composed. So basically, this is showing two web applications. One application that is visible is like the home screen, which is the one that is filling all the UI, or, I mean, all the screen available on the device that is being run, which is showing some uh, shortcuts, some widgets that show like the status of connectivity, uh, connecting to the service, to the time and weather, et cetera. So this is a web application, the uh, home screen area. And also, in other Wayland surface that is handled by the AGL compositor, that is also the graphic uh, element that uh, is uh, deployed on top of. There's another web application that is the applications area. This is like a launcher, which is a separate web app. So we are seeing there everything you see in the, in the web UI is, is like all, all of things is web, and there are like several applica web applications running and visible at the same time. So when, when clicking on the shortcuts or clicking on, on some of the uh, list of the applications, you will be like popping up those applications in the, in the screen area. Uh, and when switching back in the home screen application, you are restoring and bringing them back and, and, and out. Um, I, we have like a, a demo set up in the exhibitor showcase. If you are more interested, you can come by uh, and, and we can, I, I'm be happy to explain it and you can be playing with, uh, with the demos there. Um, so now going a bit more in detail on what a web application for AGL is. So a web app can be something as simple as a, basically three files or two files. So could be like an app info JSON a document, which is like the one that defines the metadata the application uses. So it should be like each web app should have like the, the ma basic main information, like the title, uh, the application type, the icon, etc. So it can have like uh, the, the reference to the um, uh, license, etc. Uh, and, and can even uh, wrap an external URL. As, as we are using a, a web runtime, uh, actually, what you pop up when running a web uh, application is a URL uh, th that brings up a Chromium application inside there, a web view that shows like the content for your service. So it, it, should, it should work as you're running an, inside a, a Chromium uh, web view, uh, your application configured there. So as mentioned, you can like use any uh, web technology you want to run. So a web app can be like just a plain HTML and JavaScript, can be a WASM file, can be a WebGL element, can be a, a node application that has supported. You can like make a NPM bundle and you can run it and, and, and run, it, uh, run it from a, a, a web app inside AGL with any front end library. And this also applies to the home screen. Like the home screen that I was showing was like, uh, again, an application that could be any integrator or tier one can use their own version of the UI, just changing the styles, creating a new application with a new composition, and you could be getting like your own HTML uh, view inside a GL demo platform. So in order to make them uh, in the upstream repositories of, of, of automatic Red Linux, or even for working them locally, uh, you just create uh, that uh, main HTML file with all the needed resources. So when you are bundling an application, like the code of the application that you run locally, 
uh, you add the application config JSON file, and then uh, you you can create like the JTRO recipes to add it to the AGL tree. So you can see that there are like the examples of the already existing application, web applications inside the demo platform, which are like the system ones. I will be talking a bit about those, but applications like the mixer, the HVAC control, like multimedia applications, like uh, uh, settings, all those apps are already upstream in the Garrett repository of AGL, uh, a dashboard. Some of them are like placeholders or are like concepts of, of applications that are not connected to all the services, are kind of, some of them are mocks. But you can see how to, and they, some of them are made with Node, but you can see examples of how to create applications and integrate them in, into AGL. Uh, also, in order to explain like the easiest uh, web app that, uh, that one could integrate into AGL, I'm, I'm using this simple example that is creating a, a Yamendo application. Yamendo is a, a, a free music streaming service that just has a one URL. We can just use that as a kind of a, a PWA application. So it just consumes something from a service and just brings it and puts it into AGL. So the example of this would be as easy as defining in the application JSON file. So which is like the idea of the application, like the title that it would be, like the description, which is like the entry point for this. This is like, in this case an index HTML file, which is, would be like very simple because it would just will open just a, a remote location file. So if your service is already available remotely, you can use an index HTML file that just connect to a server service. If, if it's not talking to services inside the car, I will be explaining cases that are more complex that talk to the services inside the vehicle uh, in the next example. Uh, and, and an icon and, and that's it. So you, in this case, the, as I was mentioning, the index is as simple as opening an external service. I mean, for testing something very basic, you, this is like the boilerplate for creating applications. If your web app is local, which is like, it's going to be like the majority of the cases, here the, this, this entry point will have like, okay, your game or whatever bundled as a, like, like all the resources that are used are going to be packed together with this, not just this index file. Uh, to create the Jocto recipe for this, uh, you just add it to the recipes demo. Uh, and you, in this case, you just link to the ID of the application. You list the, the, the license that is going to be used. Th those, those informations are all available in the Jocto guides about the, the licensing that, that is going to be used. And you, you can see like the rest of them. Uh, this would this was just uh, configure the URL where the where the um, new application is, and as mentioned, this is it. once it's available. But for testing in local repositories, you, you can use some local file. So this is going to be when building the entire system is going to pack that extension and put it inside the demo the demo image. Uh, so to make that easier, it's also possible to use a local dev file. I don't know if you are familiar with, using, with building in, in Yocto, but it's also uh, possible to skip using the source and using that com local compilation. Uh, so in this case, for this simple example, you just put that in your AGL root build config file and you do the modifications locally if you are developing specifically changes inside the AGL version of the web app, I insist. For everything else, you can work on your usual uh, web development environment. You are just working on your application. When you, the, the changes are, are available, you just can package and also zip it. This is like for getting the, installation, the application installed for the very first time. Then it's just when you have like your uh, virtual image running on QEMU, you just can update the, the, with, the, with the changes to sync them with the new version of the file. Uh, so then it's just compiled and this is so it's going to be building already the, the application that you, that you included. Um, so yep, 
uh, in this case, there are some additional flags that, uh, that are using the Joctor RCP. You will see the, all of them are the same. And the build infrastructure is, is the same for, for all the services in, in the web applications. You just add the, the application into the list of existing apps that are going to be available in, in the AGL demo platform. And then uh, when creating the whole uh, AGL from the scratch, it will be including the, this, this sample of, of application. As mentioned, uh, like probably the easiest way to set up and to start testing AGL demo apps is using the emulator. So then you just run a QEMU64, for instance, uh, and you just directly launch it and, and can connect to that using a, a VNC client. Uh, something, inter and, and then it would be just looking like that. I mean, the, the steps might look uh, not trivial for the first time, but this is like uh, in order just to have like the, um, the application available from the scratch when everything, when someone builds an HTML image to get directly the, it integrated in the demo platform. So then you, it gets activated by the launcher. So the list of application that it was listed will be already showing that if we do that. And then you just click on the, on the icon and, and you get it launched. Also something possible when working on web apps in AGL is using uh, remote uh, dev tools. So when using in, with the AGL devil flag, not in production mode, it's possible to connect uh, to the port uh, 9998 uh, to, yeah, to, to inspect with uh, Chromium uh, developer tools the, the code of the application. You can detect any issue. You can trigger JavaScript events. You can inspect the status, etc. So everything can be done uh, directly. So uh, might be necessary in some case. So just sharing here the tip. Uh, to enable port forwarding if needed to connect to the service with uh, exporting QB uh, option. Uh, yeah, and, and this way you could be like running AGL in your emulated, uh, in your emulated uh, QEMU or in a physical device. And you can use uh, your local Chromium browser to connect to the uh, to the IP uh, of the of the virtual machine, or, or, the, or the, where the uh, Renesas board or Raspberry is working, so you can just debug the application there with with Dev Tools. So this was like, I mean, the majority of the, well, some of the applications that people might be willing to incorporate to the demo platform might not need to talk to specific services inside the car. So this case of uh, uh, the amendment application was something very simple that use, opens a remote service and provides, delivers multimedia content. You get that done because you are using the Chromium web runtime. So it's like pop opening up a, a, a web service of that and you are getting all the functionality by that. You get that with games, you get that with, I mean, a lot of applications that don't need to talk to the sensors or the hardware that is specifically in the vehicle. But this is not the case for all the cases. So some applications, I will be explaining here the case of, for instance, the, the HVAC application, that is the air condition uh, application in the car. OK, they need, of course, to know the status of, OK, what's the fan speed in my system? What's like the temperature I want to set uh, to the left passenger? So this requires talking to services that are in the car. The way that we have been doing this is using with WebSockets. So web applications can use JavaScript APIs and use WebSockets to talk to the CAN service, to the Bluetooth, to the settings, to everything. There, there's like a documentation on the API of the services available on the, on, the, on the car. This was using a component that was called the application framework that is being uh, replaced by uh, other more standard ways to do that uh, in, in open source projects as this application framework was be, not being maintained. Uh, so the idea is also to make possible to communicate these uh, services communication with other 
front ends, as could be also the case of Flutter. So the idea is to be able to use gRPC uh, for interprotocol communication. It is still possible from the web apps to talk using web sockets, but for implementing the communication with the layer le with the lower lower layer, sorry, uh, we are going to use we are using already Cooks a punto val server. So this is a way to wrap the interprocess communication. Uh, working within being vehicles and is modeled by, uh, a, by VSS data model. So it's a way to communicate services. So again, we can still have services in the car to talk to those APIs, right? Which are services, I mean, the, 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 easy, the most clear example is this, this HVAC application. I will be uh, using some cases that explain how this communication is happening there. So in order to do that, we, we define a new web socket that is able to communicate with that. And then it's necessary to authorize that that application is going to be able to talk uh, to the, to the cooks.val server. So uh, again, all, all of this code is, you can check how the, the HVAC application works and you can see that you can use it as a boilerplate you, for anyone willing to integrate services that are talking to, to uh, APIs inside the car can, can use that uh, as a reference. So what it does is this, it opens a socket and the socket is authorized, which provides that a, a token is brought to the client, a JSON web token. So each application has their own uh, tokens for security. So uh, as mentioned, the different web apps have their own, the different uh, tokens. So that allow us to have isolation between permissions of the different webs, web applications, right? Uh, specifically for development, uh, there's, it's possible to use directly cooksa.val keys, so they are already available, so this can be simplified. Uh, and there's documentation there to, to how to use that. But basically, then a request is sent, the communication is done, and then there's a, a web socket um, to, to make the communication. So. From our HVAC uh, web application, uh, that is okay. You you just have to subscribe to signals that will be notified when the value of uh, some system in the car changes. So when I mean every service in the car will be triggering a signal that is going to be exported using this uh, these uh, APIs. So if the I mean, when doors are open with a fuel system, everything is going to be triggering uh, messages. In this case, uh, the fan speed that can be modified with any UI or the physical buttons that trigger that AC is turned on or off will be sending messages to uh, certain method names. Uh, so by the application being subscribed, it's going to be receiving the updates so they can be notified and, um, and trigger back the response. The same to send message. I mean, in some cases, we want to do the information going down. So it's like, okay, I want to switch or to put to 100% the fan speed in my car. So you just send a message that get not, gets notified uh, into, the, into, the, into the path. To retrieve and set data, as I was mentioning, is the same. So, uh, again, you just have getters and setter methods with the path of the object to be used and the value to be used. Uh, and this then provides, sorry that it's a bit dark, but you can test this with the HVAC application. So when you are clicking on the buttons of the heating system or on the fan speed or on setting configurations, you get like the message in the canvas being notified and getting the, like, the listener actions received on the HVAC test. Again, feel free to uh, come by the booth and, and we can be explaining more about this in detail. So there's already ongoing work on this regard. So basically we are like porting some of this communication API to the rest of the demos. Uh, so the, the demo web apps, I mean, some of them are still ongoing because the interfaces are being defined. Uh, and the idea is to provide a protobuf interface so it's easier to make connection with all, with all of them. Uh, again, this is in order to generate the code. You can see that in the, in the example of the web apps that are available uh, in the system. 
about init in the request. I, I mean, this, again, just has to be made once for applications that need to talk to services in the car. And then it's just standard JavaScript work. It's like, okay, if I want to use a method available, I want to uh, get access to the multimedia volume status or for do some, uh, create some, some notification, whatever. You, you just do, once you did that, you just use every service in the car. So yeah, there, there are additional documents about how to work with these uh, documents on the state of, of gRPC in the browser. But again, like doing a small recap, to create a simple web app, you just bundle or you just have an application file that you put once in the building of the application and that connects that to all the tooling that makes the application available in, in AGL. And after that, you just can copy your applications in that di directory to get the, them tested. Uh, and for more complex things that need to talk to the car, we use Kupsa or uh, as, as a wrapper for gRPC. So the, the, the very simple examples for this application are, are here uh, for this, this event application and the Kupsa and, and the HVAC ones. So you can take a look and, and come back with more complex questions if you have them. Uh, so here I also linked in the video uh, a demo of the, that you can see here if you are physically uh, at, at Yokohama uh, this time or, or in this video that is showing how this runs. This is showing also uh, like 3D acceleration working on the Renesas uh, H3 board, this demo of the HVAC application. And again, coming back, so, Part of the goal for all this infrastructure is like, again, any web technology can be run into AGL right now. So if you have a, a web app, you can just build it and it's going to be running in, in, in AGL. This also extends to more use cases as for instance, uh, there's already native, uh, I mean, there's already web support for Flutter web bundles. There's, there's ongoing work to make, uh, to provide Flutter capacity as another UI as another possible UI for AGL, which might not be the case for all uh, use cases. Some people might be having the choice to use like different uh, UI technologies. So yeah, for Flutter apps, it is possible to, to bundle them and they are running as you see here. This is like the gallery app that is running as a web app as the same example that I did for the, for the Jamendo one. You just bundle that, you put the index file, you put the app manifest, and then you can run it here. I, I am linking here to a specific talk we delivered about how to do this, if you are interested in knowing more about this case. Uh, so again, like recapping about how, which is like the current status on, on, of our work into, 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 into this area of uh, working on the web run, runtime with WAM, we still are working on updating the rest of the demo application to use the Cooksaval server uh, services APIs. The good thing also is that all the methods are going to be compatible with all the different UIs. So right now the Qt demo that is using them, the HTML and any Flutter application will be using them. Uh, but yeah, for, for cases of people just using uh, uh, only standard HTML technologies, they can use directly uh, the, the, the web image and put their applications there. Uh, we are also working on bug fixing and improvements on Needlefish, which is the current version, and Octopus, that will be like the next release. Um, so yeah, th there are some additional uh, system applications and, and demo apps that we are working on making available to have like a like a more complete uh, experience using the web application. Uh, there are like a huge lot of web use cases that are interesting. Some of them, uh, we were also showing them uh, in, the, in the booth, it's like when you are using plain HTML, anything you can do with any web uh, example, you can run it out of the box on, on, on AGL. Some demos, for instance, are using JavaScript libraries that detect faces and status. So it's very easy to say, okay, if I'm a web developer and I want to do an application that detects that you are tired and you get some notification, you can do that. Uh, if you want to do 
anything that connects to external services, you, you can do that uh, too. So everything like the web doesn't have any limit about that. You can just connect, a, create a communication application that uses WebRTC, whatever, very easily. So this is kind of the ongoing work and future plans that we have. We are also working on a revamp of the home screen layout to, yeah, to make more capacity to, uh, that people can, can uh, follow up and, and know also how to do that. There are different flavors. They can put their own UI or CSS styling. We, we keep also updating the Chromium web runtime. Uh, to be, it's currently using 91, and it will be using 94 in, in like very soon, which is like the, the latest version that uh, LG releases for WebOS and Next. And yeah, and also the plan is to provide a better full feature browser user experience. So we, we are shipping like standard Chromium that is embedded into, into, the, into the demo. So you have a full complete browser there. But uh, I mean, there's margin for improvement to make it more like touch gesture uh, friendly. There are features that you don't need when working on, on if on a full feature browser that you may have in the car, but you don't need like all the functionalities or a small book, whatever. There are many things that can be simplified there. So that's kind of the ongoing work uh, in that regard. So I want to thank, uh, yeah, everyone, my, my uh, colleagues at Igalia that have been working on this, uh, that has been uh, Roger and Jose uh, specifically, uh, and yes, also, also me. Uh, you can reach to any of us uh, here, if you have doubts or if we can help with, with any topic on that we are we're covering on this presentation or related yeah, in general to, to how Chromium is embedded here or, or whatever. I was not getting too bit in detail about the architecture itself. And that was all. So thank you. And I think now I have time for uh, some questions. So how, how can I debug the application? Using log tracing metrics or there's this standard web application framework as using the, for example, APM, application performance monitoring something. So okay. that can you use that, those traditional tool to debug or monitor application on the B core? So uh, uh, I, I was just, uh, explaining a bit the how using remote uh, web inspector to debug the application one is running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, if, if the, that, the, the vehicle doesn't guarantee to be connected to the internet, uh -huh. right? for example, the undersea, you know, trunk tunnel or parking lot in okay. the so basement. So how, how are those situations gonna be handled? Okay, that's, that's a good question. So I, 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 the question I was getting is how to uh, debug the behavior of the of the applications when working on offline a scenario where we don't have capacity to use our remote inspector. Uh, well, part of the way to do that is like as you kind of would be working on a, on, on on any other offline application when you are running an app and on on an embedded system and you don't have the capacity to connect to that. Uh, I understand that you might add some additional logic in the application to add like additional logging mechanisms or something like that. You could be like connecting to them later. It's actually a use case. I, we, we, we didn't have any example of, of that. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's something interesting. What I could think of right now is like, okay, if I want to get like status of what happened, during the car, I think it would be necessary to be keeping track locally about that and then use, I mean, when you have connectivity, then you can, you can use any of the storage API you have in the browser, for instance. You can use uh, any, any of the existing uh, internal database storage procedure. That's a responsibility for the application. Yeah, right now, right now should be responsibility of the application. All right. So you're using Chrome as Chromium as the client of the WebSocket, but I'm trying to understand where the server of this WebSocket is that's taking the request and then actually talking to the car's internal <laughs> systems. Okay, 
So your question was about who is the server of the... Is, is there a Damien <laughs> running the background when you <laughs> kick it off or...? Yeah, in this case, the, the, the server of those services is cooksa.val service. So there's a daemon that is running. So it's providing the, like, the server to connect to those APIs. So you just consume that with your application WebSocket. Uh, but the server is cooksa.val uh, service. So then if I, have, if I have a car with a new feature, how uh -huh. do I add a new API engine uh -huh. to that whole socket you know, uh -huh. pipeline? OK. Yeah, I mean, you can also add additional services that are exported uh, via, oops, you can add additional services that are used in, in the, in the Coupsa uh, area. So you can also add services to be exported from there. I, I think I'm afraid I'm running out of time. So uh, we, can, we can also continue talking about that offside, uh, offline. Um, okay, so thank you everyone. Uh,